Today we're going to learn a lot about medieval warfare technology, the sort of armor and weapons that medieval knights, men-at-arms and soldiers used. But we're going to do this in a very fun way, not only by looking at actual archaeological and academic evidence, of course manuscripts, brasses and effigies and whatnot, but also looking at video games and the sort of things that we like, and today we're going to specifically focus on the Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion. This is the Metatron channel. Let's get to it. So when we look at a video game such as uh, Elder Scrolls Oblivion, but in general the Elder Scrolls has this characteristic, there are many different possible sets of armor, and normally these sets are divided by the sort of material that they're made of. You've got the iron set, you've got the uh, steel set, of course you also have elven set and whatnot, but today we're going to focus on the steel set. Now the steel set from Oblivion, if compared to the steel set from the Elder Scrolls Skyrim, is a lot more historically accurate, meaning that you can see that it's a lot more similar to the sort of gear or uh, armor and equipment that real medieval soldiers in Europe used in the late Middle Ages. In fact, you can see it's a full plate suit of armor, it's a full plate harness, and that sort of technology is mostly late 15th century. First of all, we are talking about medieval armor, where the heck am I wearing modern armor? Well, a knight in shining armor was often considered to be a the sort of a medieval equivalent of a tank. It's basically a medieval tank. Well, if medieval tanks is what you like, I think you might also like modern tanks. And if you do, just let me take 60 seconds of your time to tell you about the sponsor who made this video happen. Well, this video was sponsored by World of Tanks. It's a very famous and very popular video game, for those of you who don't know it. It's basically a video game where you can uh, ride a tank and uh, shoot other tanks, and it's a lot of fun. It's very, very fun to do that, particularly when enemy tanks are driven by complete total muppets. The game has over 500 historically accurate mid-20th century tanks, has five diverse vehicle types, each with their own playstyle, light, medium, heavy tanks, tank destroyers and SPGs, artillery. Now the game is completely free to play and you can find a link in the description below that you can use to sign up and play the game and if you do that you are going to get a free Tetrak tank, three premium days and 400,000 silver and by doing that you will also be supporting the Metatron channel. Start playing today, use the link in the description below and have fun. Warning. Do what? Back on track. Now of course the game is fantasy, there is nothing wrong for example with Skyrim coming up with a completely new fantasy design but I personally for one really like the looks of real historical armor and I think that it's absolutely gorgeous to look at. Now one question that we ask though is with this sort of set which is clearly based on a northern Italian Milanese style of armor um, why wearing that sort of helmet which is called a barbute or uh, barbuta in Italian. You can see it's a fairly simple helmet with a very open face and it's not the sort of helmet that we normally imagine uh, knights wearing in the late Middle Ages such as the uh, more protective and overall much better uh, armet and um, or even the sort of helmets used uh, in tournaments such as the frog mouth. Now many people sent me messages help, trying to help me choose the sort of helmet that I am going to have forged for me because I'm having a full knightly set of armor and many said why don't you go for an armor but others said why don't you go for a barbute and so some people actually asked the question would it be historically accurate to wear a barbute with a full plate Italian set because yes I am going for a full plate northern Italian set although I still haven't reached the goal in fact many people have been generous I want to say super thanks to you guys but uh, there is a link in the description below to my crowdfunding campaign I'm, I'm having a full Italian suit of armor made for con content production of course and if you want to chip in even a five dollars duration is absolutely awesome but today we're going to learn why a barbute would be a possible choice and even a plausible one. So when we look at actual iconography manuscripts of the late 15th century what we see is that in medieval Europe in the majority of cases the helmets used by the knightly class are fully protective and fully enclosing helmets and a helmet that it was very very popular in the late 14th century and it was for example the bassinet uh, because that sort of helmets allow you to have a visor that can be hinged up and allowed you to get both breathing and the ability to see when you need it and that is a fundamental and crucial technical improvement if compared to other helmets in, in previous times such as the 
great helm for example which yes provided complete protection but if you wanted to get the ability to breathe or you wanted to be able to look around then you had to remove it entirely or helmets like the late 11th century Norman conical helmet with a nasal protection which of course gives you a great ability to breathe and, and helps you with overheating but you can see is your face is exposed so generally speaking late 15th century helmets tend to provide both they give you the ability to choose because of the fact that now you have the ability to raise a visor and for example an armet that I mentioned is even a better version of, a, of what a bassinet does because uh, together in conjunction with a wrapper which is a very ingenious Italian invention you have a double layer of protection here where you need it the most if you were to be hit by a lance in full charge um, but at the same time you can still you still have the ability to uh, open the separately hinged visor to to see to have a look at the uh, the battlefield to get some fresh air in etc okay so look at this closed helmet now i'd like you like to, to excuse me this is a very very cheap indian made replica not tailored for my head so of course it's not really this uh, good kind of helmet it's not really a very good example you know work in progress on the good one on the good helmet but i think it can still help us illustrate a point the reason why this sort of closed helmet is a is a evolutionary version of for example a bassinet or other visored helmets is because with a bassinet the moment you raise your visor uh, then your face is exposed but with this sort of helmet when you raise your visor uh, you can see that still part of my face will be protected and i'm having it I, it's i still have perfect vision i can i'm getting some nice fresh air but if blows were to come or arrows were to arrive still my face is partially protected as you can see so did a helmet like this exist yes they existed but they were and they were very popular in Italy only now please keep in mind that of course regional variation accounts uh, to very much the shape and sort of helmets and and, and armor in general that is used by uh, the uh, the upper echelons of warrior society so the knights but also the men at arms in fact a wealthy famous man at arm could be dressed as well as a knight now the salad for example is an italian invention but it will become universal in germany in italy the uh, barbute style helmet became very popular together with the venetian style salads and it became and together with other helmets such as the before mentioned Armit. Now there is an interesting piece of information about uh, Florence actually uh, ordering about a thousand barbutes to arm up the local uh, town, the, the, the town guard. So the question is, we know that the guards used it, um, we know soldiers used it, but what about the knightly class? Wouldn't it make sense for a knight to choose a more protective option? Well, interestingly enough, uh, I looked, I spent about four hours looking at manuscript iconography effigies and it was very difficult to find a T-shaped um, barbute like this one because there are many other types of, of barbutes but we want to look at the actual barbute from uh, the game Oblivion and interestingly enough I found out two very interesting things. First and foremost look at the Avant armor. It's a probably one of the most complete Italian sets of armor of the late Middle Ages that we have now in our, that, we can, that can be seen. It's found in Scotland at the uh, Scott collection and you can see it's obviously what they based Based the Oblivion steel set uh, on the mitten like gauntlet, the sort of breastplate and placard combination with the typical Italian leather strap that you find in the middle. Normally, uh, Gothic plates armor normally have a pin in here, and so the Italians used the strap. On a side note, many people ask me why did medieval knights in Italy choose the leather strap? Isn't that easy to cut? Well, we don't really know, but what we know is that they used it for over a century. So my guess is it probably wasn't that easy to cut in actual combat, because when the knight is on horseback, he's either facing a full cavalry charge of the opponent knights, in which case it's lance versus lance, so you don't really imagine a lance actually going in precisely into the leather strap and cut it, almost impossible. And secondly, if he's facing foot soldiers, then it's very difficult for them to reach the knight because he's on top of the horse. So again, his legs will be mostly exposed. So I think that, that would be the reason. Back on topic. Okay, so the set is based on the Avantama, so is it 100% historically accurate? Well, here's the thing. Not many people know that what you see, the helmet that you see in the Avantama is not the original helmet that was together with the armor. We don't know what helmet it was, but it certainly wasn't this. This is a sort of mm, display that, mm, and many museums do this, when they have an, an incomplete suit of armor and they want 
to, to, to look good, to be complete. They take a helmet that has, for example, nothing to do with, this, with the set and they just put it there. So this is not the original uh, configuration. So if the Oblivion guys based it on the Avant armor, as I think it's quite obvious that they did, that is not the way the original armor was organized. Most likely, my opinion is, that the original helmet probably was some sort of armored or closed helm. Is this a mismatch? Well, I looked at iconography, I looked at effigies, and it was very difficult, as I said, to find T-shaped uh, barbutes, but then, aha, I had an idea. What about cassoni? Well, what is a cassone? A cassone is basically the sort of chest that contained the goods, or marriage chest, that contained the goods of medieval, very wealthy uh, brides, so uh, daughters of very important families. And, and these cassoni, uh, cassone singular, cassoni plural, were highly painted and decorated. So now, if we look at one of the daughters of the De Medici family in Florence, a Florentine family in Firenze, and guess what you find? I found loads of medieval knights uh, wearing the barbute. So, if you look at these depictions, we can see, for example, on this table, not only we see knights in the background, some with a closed helmet, but also some wearing the barbute, but also we find three barbutes on the table here together with other elements of knightly armor but also look at the Muppet left down corner just hiding under a table he is a knight in full plate armor but he's wearing a barbute and by the way what the heck is he doing there okay so a knight in Italy would and could wear a barbute and most likely they did own uh, barbutes. So this set and this representation of a medieval knight is absolutely possible if we are referring to an Italian knight. But how my good friend Knight Heron, or Ian Laspina from Knight Heron Channel pointed out, and that guy's a wealth of knowledge, um, he, as he was saying, most likely a knight would own a barbute, but he would also own many other helmets and he could change the configuration of his armor depending on what he was going to do. The reason for that is that yes, a barbute was excellent because it would provide, as I said, vision, breathing, etc. But if you're going for a full cavalry charge, you know, shock cavalry, probably not a good idea. So it's good for light cavalry, it's good for certain specific uh, missions perhaps, or certain things the knights had to do, but if you had to go on the battlefield and go for a full cavalry charge, probably uh, even a knight who owned a beautiful barbute like that would uh, change it for a more protective helmet like an armet with a wrapper. Also, if we look at the barbutes uh, that belonged to a knight, of course they would be a lot more decorated and higher quality than the sort of abutes that, for example, as I mentioned before, uh, Florence ordered for the town uh, town's guard. And of course, in that case, we are talking about munition grade, so the sort of kind of mass-produced helmets of low quality, like this one here, that were uh, provided to the soldiers. And that, that, so that there will be a massive difference between the barbute uh, which belonged to a knight and the barbute which belonged to a common soldier. And we can see this again in these paintings in the Cassone, uh, because you can see how decorated and in particular the barbutes that belonged to the knights were. All right, everyone, so I hope you liked this video, and of course, thank you very much for your time and for watching. Don't forget the link in the description below to start playing World of Tanks, and at the same time, support my channel if you like this sort of content, if you like these sort of videos, then make sure to do that, because it's just a few minutes of your time, and you will be supporting actively the Metatron channel for more content like this. Thank you very much for watching, and remember, the Metatron has spread his wings. Goodbye. Warning. No, not again!